Roy LePage predicts that GTA home prices will take another hit by the end of this year. Like this article, there are many articles in the media right now trying to predict what will be happening in the housing market. And as a potential buyer or homeowner, taking all this information in and trying to make sense of it all is what's happening because everybody wants to just figure out what the best move should be. That's why in this video, I'm going to go over some of the key points in this article and share my personal opinions and thoughts in hopes that it will help you gain another perspective, not prediction, perspective of what's happening in the housing market. So the article starts off by stating that Royal LePage forecasts home prices to fall 3.5% in at the by the end of this year. They're actually correcting an earlier prediction that they had that stated that they believed in July um, home prices would rise by at least 3%. So right off the bat here, this is a great example of how predictions can be so wishy-washy. So here they start off by predicting a 3% increase to now a 3.5% decrease in home prices. So just by this statement, it's no wonder that buyers and sellers are so confused because many people are depending on the media and news to guide them on what move they should take because no one wants to make the wrong move. No one wants to, you know, make the wrong decision or even make a decision that they regret in the end. And that is totally understandable. I'm not saying that these articles don't have good information, but I feel the information that we should be taking from these articles is with a grain of salt because there are so many other factors that need to be considered. I'll go into more details of what I mean by this. Let's just get back to the article for now. So the article goes on to say that we see that people are still waiting on the sidelines. So higher borrowing costs have made it a little harder for buyers to get into the market. So what they're doing is they're waiting for interest rates to fall again. And sellers are holding back because they're hoping that home prices will return to what they were in February. As you can see, based on this part of the article, there's a lot to unpack here. So we can see that consumer behavior, so how we act and how we react, is one factor that impacts the housing market. During the pre-pandemic times, many of us had a lot of disposable income, and with the extremely low interest rates, people were bidding and purchasing at crazy prices. Now that there's a correction taking place, behaviors are changing. Some people can no longer qualify for a big enough mortgage to get them into the market due to the increases in borrowing costs, so they're holding off on buying and they're looking into renting. So this, this move that they're doing, they're hold, holding off on buying and looking to renting is causing another snowball effect. It's actually caused an increase in rental demand and sent rental prices skyrocketing over the last several months. So if you want to dive deeper on why rent prices are increasing, we can look at a couple different factors. So one of the factors being that the prices of homes are more expensive than they used to be. So for someone that's buying a home as an income property, they're purchasing a lot more. They're purchasing this home at a higher cost. So in order for them to get a return on their investment, they're having to increase the cost of rent so that they can make a profit. So that's one reason why rent cost is going up. Another reason is because the demand for rent is so high. So now that people are holding off on buying and looking into rent, or they're even not qualified to buy anymore because of the increase in interest rate, they're looking to rent. So because the demand for rent is so high, that is another factor as to why the rent prices are going up. And to just piggyback off of that is that you're going into um, rental offers with biddings. So for example, I've seen this happen numerous times. There is a home that's being rented for $3,000 a month and people are actually putting in offers um, right off the bat at $3,500. So you can see right there, they're not even going in low or even for asking, they're going right off the bat $500 more a month because they want to ensure that they land this property. So with the overbidding, that's also causing the rent prices to increase. So as you can see here, many people are really feeling the effects of rent costs because their budget is not taking them as far as it once was in the past. Another uh, common scenario that I see happening right now is that um, a lot of people sold their home during the peak and they're temporarily renting because they want to wait for home prices to hit the all-time low before they actually buy again. Now, this may sound like a great strategy, but 
there are certain factors that you need to consider. So say this person that sold high and is waiting to get into the market because they want to wait till the home prices reach at an all time low before they buy is going in with a mortgage. Maybe they're not paying cash for their house. Maybe they need to acquire a mortgage. Well, now they are now actually incurring a hiring borrowing cost because as we all know, there are talks that there's going to be another interest rate hike. And we don't know how many more there are going to be by the end of the year. So that's just something to consider. If you're going in with a mortgage, you may want to consider locking in a mortgage at a lower rate before rates start to go up again. Another factor to consider, I've mentioned this numerous times that the supply of housing remains low. So if you're holding off on purchasing a home, you're not just going to purchase the first home you see, you're going to want to purchase a home that meets the majority of your criteria, your majority of your wants and needs, right? So by having a low supply of housing out on the market, you're kind of running the risk of not getting everything that you may want. So you may be renting for a year, but what if that holds you back and you're ending up having to rent for now two years because the home that you ideally want is not on the market at that time? So it's just another uh, factor to consider when you're holding out on buying because you want to wait until prices hit all time low. And also a last point that I want to make about this is that, as I mentioned, supply remains low. So even if home prices do drop, they are not dropping at drastic measures. So you have to really weigh out if the cost of saving really outweighs the cost that you're going to be paying towards, I don't know, one year, two years of rent. So that's just another factor to consider. And the last point that I want to address from this article is um, them saying that they just don't see house prices going down to pre-pandemic levels. People will absorb the rate hikes and prices will level out by spring 2023. So what does this mean? In my opinion, they are saying that we're just going to roll with the punches. We're going to have to just deal with the interest rate hike because it's something that's beyond our control and that home prices are not going to go back down to levels that they were at pre-pandemic times. And the reason being is there's there's a lack of supply. So I mentioned this before, because of the lack of supply, home prices will remain at a high price just because there is not enough of it and the demand for it is high. So by waiting on the sidelines, you may not benefit as much as you think because there's just so many different factors that you need to consider. So the overall message that I wanted to make clear from this article is that be careful when you're reading these article headlines um, because they can be really misleading. So in this article, it's saying that home prices will um, take another hit by the end of this year. So this might give the impressions for buyers to wait, wait out, wait till the end of this year and you might get the best deal possible. But what they're not stating here is the fact that there are talks of interest rate hikes. So that's a factor that you need to consider because if you're not locking in a rate now, then you're just going to have to lock in when that rate becomes higher. And at that time, you're going to be borrowing at a higher rate, but also you have to take, you have to keep into consideration whether you will still qualify to even purchase. Because remember, when the borrowing cost increases and it's it costs more to borrow, then you don't qualify for as much anymore unless you can prove that you're making more income. So it's just something to consider. I just don't want you to hold off on your goals because you think that you're making the right decision by reading in to these you know, one liner headlines. I want you to be able to make a really informed decisions by looking at your overall unique situation and taking all the different perspectives into consideration, all the different factors into consideration. And you can, you don't have to do this alone. You can go and talk to the experts, you know, talk to a financial advisor, your mortgage broker, talk to a real estate agent, get their opinion. If you trust them and you trust that they're going to give you the best advice possible for, in order for you to meet your goals, get that advice, get Getting as much information as you possibly can will help you will help you meet your goals and will help you make the decision that's right for you. I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to get a more in-depth look of what's happening in the Durham region market, please feel free to check out my video right here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.